That must make you my vanguard captain. Welcome to Interstellar Affairs. I'm Deputy Chief Diplomat McIntyre, Chief Yassine's second-in-command. I heard you were instrumental in protecting the city from the attack. You have my gratitude. I was also informed that you gave quite the presentation to the Cabinet. Chief Yassine wants you to know the Interstellar Affairs Office is fully committed to this endeavor, accessing the Terramorph data and beyond. We're going to do everything in our power to make sure you have the tools you need. And that means first getting you into the Archives. You do know what the Archives are, correct? Hmm. Someone paid attention in current events. So, then you also know that it was originally managed by the three major galactic players. Access to the Archives is only granted in cases of dire emergency and requires a one-time use code from each of the three Armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, the UC is already on board, so that means we'll need to convince two people, the Ambassadors of the Freestar Collective and House Varun, to hand over their codes. Get them both and you'll have your data. But that's a lot easier said than done. No. Each is a strip of several million random numbers generated on the fly based on biometric keys kept by each of the ambassadors on their person at all times. They're impossible to create without those keys, and those keys stay with the ambassadors, meaning we're accessing nothing if we can't get them on our side. I couldn't agree more. However, both ambassadors have reasons they won't or can't, work with us. Now, I'll provide guidance on how we believe you can acquire each code, but ultimately, it'll be up to you to get them both to cooperate. And I do mean cooperate. Threats and violence are off the table here. Though that doesn't mean we can't get creative. But it does mean we need to get you up to speed on who you're dealing with. Who do you want to start with? Ambassador Radcliffe of Freestar, or Ambassador Balmore of House Varun? Ah, the good Ambassador Radcliffe. She's a veteran of the Colony War, and her only goal in life is to make ours miserable. Now, officially, our office is suggesting you try and negotiate with her. Use your experiences as a member of the military and with the threat we're facing to convince her to lend her support. And who knows? Maybe that'll work. Stranger things have happened. But my suspicion is we're going to have to rely on other tools to get her code. Certainly. See, good diplomacy is all about the careful application of pressure. We just need to find the squeeze. UC Intelligence has a recording device planted in the Ambassador's living quarters which we suspect you can use to your advantage. But getting caught trespassing is a quick way to land yourself in an embassy holding cell. So, if you are going to try and access the device, you're going to need to find a way in there without being seen. Now, we recovered some intel we believe should be able to help with that. But there's also a disgruntled staff member you might be able to pump for information maybe even convinced to work with you. Name's Cameron Long. He's younger than Ratcliffe, bears less of a grudge towards the UC. He works closely with the Ambassador, making him a promising source for information on the ins and outs of Embassy life, and someone who very likely hates her guts. Yes, many. Don't steal anything. Don't get caught anywhere you're not supposed to. Absolutely do not harm anyone. If something goes wrong, we'll do our best to smooth things over, but I can't make any promises. All right. Here, your diplomatic ID. I'll give them a heads up, you're on your way. Not likely to let you through the door otherwise. And take these. Chief Yassine wanted you to have some options on how to proceed in there. Ambassador Balmore's a challenge. 
When the rest of House Varun retreated into seclusion shortly after the signing of the armistice, Balmor stayed here. He's since lent his support to a small number of archival requests, so there's real hope he might again. Though claiming to know how a member of House Varun thinks is a quick way to earn yourself a psych eval. Well, these days, they're primarily considered a security threat. House Varun Zealots, a fundamentalist outshoot of the group that stayed behind when the rest retreated into seclusion, want nothing more than to send everyone not dedicated to their cause to the Great Serpent in the Sky. But that hasn't always been the case. After they ended the Serpent's Crusade about 70 years back, House Varun did take a real run at trying to normalize relations with the rest of the galaxy. It's why they have an embassy here in the first place, why they were included in the armistice negotiations. But then, without warning, they left, leaving behind, to our knowledge, just the ambassador and his duty under the armistice. Of course, but there is another wrinkle. We're not 100% sure Balmor is actually still alive. His public appearances, were always rare, but it's been several years now since he last poked his head out. Scans of the facility show life signs, but not the kind we were expecting. Your task is to find him and kindly but firmly remind him of his duties under the armistice. The Varun delegation brought more than a few of their native flora with them when they set up in the embassy. It seems those plants have been allowed to flourish, making it hard for us to verify what's flora and what's ambassador. The embassy is still legally House Varun's sovereign territory, so we're not technically permitted inside. We've snuck in the occasional spy, of course, but the Ambassador has proven more evasive than you'd expect for a man of his age. But we're quite sure he hasn't left the city. The man stands out. Then you search the Embassy for his biometric key, collect your code piece, and we'll go about notifying his next of kin, if we can ever find them. But let's hope it doesn't come to that. It would at least be a speedier negotiation, but I, of course, hope the Ambassador is alive and well. Now, the Embassy front door isn't an option, but our spies have stated there's a side entrance that should allow you access. Here. This device should get you all the way down to the Embassy interior. Once you're inside, though, finding the Ambassador is going to be up to you. And fair warning, we received a report that alarms might have been tripped inside the Embassy during the attacks. Watch out for automated security in there. Now, if you have additional questions, or require clearance for a new approach we haven't already discussed, don't hesitate to ask. I'd suggest you start with Ambassador Radcliffe. Approach her while the attack is still fresh in her and her staff's mind. Be smart out there, Captain. I'm sorry, do you have an appointment? Ah, you're the one McIntyre called about. The eyewitness. She said you were at the spaceport. You have my thanks for what you did down there, truly. Saved many lives. Now, she also mentioned that, and maybe it was just a bad connection, that now the UC wants Terramorph data from the Armistice Archives, some of the most highly guarded information in the galaxy, in order to protect us all. I can only presume you're here to tell me I misheard her and that they didn't send you, local hero, to futilely beg on their behalf. Tell me I've got that right. Excuse me. A less level-headed person might think that was a threat, Captain. Let me be frank, Captain. The answer is no. That information is there because it is dangerous. I will not be the one responsible for its release. Now. Why don't you quit wasting my time, and yours, and go? You're really gonna push this? All right, I will give you one chance, one, to convince me. Understood. I'm listening.
You know that for sure. That is interesting. Londinian. They had to abandon the planet. But that couldn't happen again. I suppose you're right. Our job and our responsibility. Well, Captain, you... you make some good points. But if I'm really granting you access, I'm gonna need the following concessions. Your access will be limited. You can only take out the items related to stopping these terramorphs. The monitors will make sure of it. You go in once. You get everything you need on your trip, and never again. And all research done with the data will be monitored. If this data is being used to save the galaxy, the galaxy needs to be involved in the oversight. Freestar scientists will watch your people like hawks. So, do we have an agreement? Excellent. Follow me. Tell me it should only take a moment. And there. Here, I'll reach out to Deputy McIntyre. We'll coordinate the necessary oversights. To unlikely allies, I guess. So... What seems punishment becomes providence. <laughs> A reminder we can never truly know the Great Serpent's designs for us. You have my thanks, and my apologies for the ordeal you just endured. Come, let us discuss. Not the ideal introduction, I suppose, giving you a grand tour of the Embassy via barely functioning intercoms. <laughs> I do greatly appreciate your persistence. I suspect the Venom Tree upstairs has worked itself into more systems than I'd realized. But then again, who could cage such a beauty? <laughs> Tell me though, what is it like outside? I heard the broadcast mentioning an attack, uh, then the embassy was struck with a power surge, and then... Silence. Has the rest of the city suffered quite so badly? I take it you didn't have such an experience where you were, then, hmm? Yes, the entire embassy was thrown into lockdown. Trapping me in my quarters, disabling the Venom Tree's filters, and arming the defenses. A disconcerting experience, to say the least. Was the rest of the city spared? Carmless spores, you have my word, but uh, hard to navigate. Hence why I was guiding you through the intercoms to restore the environmental controls. <laughs> and release me. It is the sap of the tree that gives it its... Well, <laughs> perhaps not a topic for this exact moment. But I must know of the rest of the city. Does it still stand? <sighs> is that right, huh? I shall need to have these repairs seen to sooner rather than later. Now, it cannot solely be the Serpent's Grace that brought you here at such an opportune moment. You were sent by the UC. That much is obvious. Who else could just waltz through my door, hmm? And the broadcast spoke of terror morphs at the spaceport. A worrying occurrence, certainly, but coming here of all places, when all I could provide is some enthused cheerleading and... Ah... Uh, an archive code. So the UC requires information, then. On terror morphs, presumably, hmm? Do I see this all clearly? Yeah, the preservation of life stands as the very purpose of the Archives. Using its data to prevent more attacks? 
There is logic there. But if I am to grant you access, I have a requirement. For years, House Varun has been known only as an agent of slaughter. We founded this embassy with hopes of shedding that legacy. With little success. In exchange for my code, I require this. You must be the one who ensures it is used for good. Ensure House Varun's legacy is more than just carnage. The knowledge you ask for isn't evil. No knowledge is. It is we who bend it to evil ends. Oh, you must assure me this will be used to save lives, not endanger them. Well then, I shall not fear. Please, follow me. Trying to carry too much on your own. Let it be used for good. Captain, you're back sooner than... Oh, oh, wait, did... Did you actually succeed? With Radcliffe? And Balmore? We're all in agreement. You saved him. You Vanguard really do take that above and beyond thing seriously, don't you? Fine work. And now, I've already arranged everything with the archival monitors. When you get down there, the UC monitor will give you instructions on how to deploy the codes. Follow them to the letter. Here, the UC code piece and an archival access card. The entrance is just on the other side of the plaza across from Mast. Absolute best behavior down there, all right? They'll walk you through everything, step by step. If you'd be willing to transfer the documents to the Major, she and I have been discussing what comes next. Time for us to start getting some real answers, and figure out if we've been asking the right questions. So whenever you're ready. I... Yes. It will be. Percival and I have done our damage. This... This is us starting to put some things right. So with the data out of the way, we've been discussing where exactly this work's getting done. The Red Devil's headquarters on Mars, back where you found Percival, seemed the natural spot. Already has the equipment, the safety measures. 
Though it sounded like the deputy had a few more things she needed to discuss with you first. Indeed. The most important of which is getting you your citizenship. Then I guess we'll see you on Mars. Captain, if you'll follow me. All right, Captain. Are you ready to become a citizen of the United Colonies? Well, only citizens can own property in New Atlantis. We also pay a discounted rate at any United Colonies merchant. And all citizens receive an ample credit disbursement upon joining. It doesn't. We don't really care where else you might have been or might become a citizen. Once you earn your place in the United Colonies, it's yours. Good. This isn't the only item we need to discuss, so I'll give you the short version. Please raise your hand. Captain, through your actions today and in days past, you have earned your place among the United Colonies. Through service, bravery, strength, and upholding of the mutual good. Will you carry and cultivate these values for as long as you remain a citizen? Then, Captain, I'm pleased to welcome you into the United Colonies as a full citizen. Here, your official ID and your citizenship dispensation. We've also let the Aphelion Realty Office out in the plaza know you're approved to purchase property. Now, the other item we needed to discuss. There's a member of the UC who's asked to speak to you, but this person is in a... sensitive position. Normally, we wouldn't even consider something like this. But we think this person has information that could prove useful in dealing with the Terramorphs. And they've stated they'll only share it with you. They asked for you by name. So I need your agreement that everything you're about to see is kept in the strictest confidence. You can tell no one. Can you agree to these terms? I'm sorry. I can't share any more without your word. Do I have it? Let's hope it never comes to that. Head to the elevator. You're going to subsection 7. I'll make sure you're cleared for access by the time you get there. 